That's after analyzing your financial plans. Denali, first, we need to find out more about your bank. And find out, you need, or you need to help us find out more about your bank. And you need to research the rates and all the services it offers. And you need to find those Microsoft shares. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Worst comes worst. It, mm -hmm. Worst comes worst. If you can't find them yourself, hire someone to. There are people out there professionalized in that. And when you do find them, I'd recommend likely holding on to them because Microsoft is a very, very sturdy company. But it may not go up much. It's not going to go down much either because it's a so-called blue chip stock. But it may be worth considering selling that and reinvesting it in a stock that has more opportunity for growth. That, or you could just use as the core of a diversified portfolio that you invest in later with your income. Anyway. And with the income possibly from the savings bonds when they mature. So I also recommend holding onto the savings bond until they've reached their maturity. Because selling them now, you would not you'd get more later, more profit, more money later. But for now, hold on to them. And if an emergency arises, possibly with uh, Campbell's sick mother, then you can use that to take care of her. That and Microsoft shares, since those are liquid assets. If that, if that is the case, if you probably the case, should not. You yeah. should sell them and pay off the loan, or pay off that, especially the credit card debt. Yeah. Credit card debt now is upwards of 17%. So you, you need to pay off that immediately, either with the money from the bonds, or from your savings account, or from your income. Just any way you can, really. Credit the, card the, col the college loans, though, those you can just pay them off gradually, but sooner, sooner rather than later is, is preferred. That would be better Use for you. Use some of your income to pay off that, too, rather than just paying the minimum. And now for the credit union, I understand you have a, Campbell, you have a relationship with the credit union since your sophomore year in high school. Yes. But. <laughs> but I'm thinking like she said, oh, okay. <laughs> she, anyway. she's, been, she's had an account with them for six years. Uh, yeah. Well, but credit unions, they're, they're good. They're um, local. But they don't have a ton of services. They have some, which may be enough for you. But it may be worth investigating, looking around at, at those at least four other banks in your area looking at their offers, their CD rates, and all their options, possibly college savings accounts for the children you may be having sooner. Yeah, we're, we're in a capitalist society. You have a right to shop around for the best deals at banks. And then so you should probably also take the money out of the two banks and combine them into a joint account at either Denali's bank or another bank based on the interest rates they offer. And keep that around as an emergency fund for mom or whatever arises. You never know when you're going to have a car accident and you need $2,000 instantly. How much did you have in the sale? $3,200. $3,200. Combined. Combined. No, how much should we have? Oh, should we have? It's a cool question. The more the better. You should, say, you should save at least 10% of your income yeah. straight off before you even consider buying it, buying anything. Yeah. Just take 10%, stick in the bank, minimum. Forever? Yes. Well, until you're ready to retire, at least. And then well, then you don't have the income to put. Oh, true point. But then... Yeah. Credit card's okay. Well, use it as long as you pay it off in full at the end of every month. I mean, it's good for the credit score, but you not want to keep any debt on it. You can possibly look at other credit card interest rates. I don't know what your interest rate is, but possibly there may be some better offers. Yeah, like for cash back and all that stuff. Every month, it doesn't matter. Well, this like, is true. Cash back offers and all for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just look around. Again, capitalist society, you can look around for and there, also, and there are also some credit cards where like, wherever you spend them, money goes into the college savings account for the children that you may also be planning on having. If we did get rid of the credit card, what would be the best way to start the college savings for um, our family? There are many uh, state or federal government backed um, savings accounts, like 529 plans. Mm -hmm. And there are also, they're also uh, like just CD, like you, don't, you also don't have to have a college, a speci specified college savings plan. You can just do a, a five year CD or a longer term option. I mean, or you could just do rolling CDs of like six month, one year, two year, three year, five year, so that one of them is always maturing in case you need emergency funds. You, you need life insurance. I recommend that you have enough that if one of you, something unfortunately happens to you, the other one can continue to live 
reasonably for several years. Or if it's in the case of the injury workers comp, so they can work, they can be, they can um, live reasonably enough until you can get back, get back to the job. So what's that number? I mean, what, what's, is there a rule of thumb? Or, I mean, should it be whole life or term? Probably term, since you're going to be, if you're going to be saving for retirement, that those funds can be used in place of the life insurance. So, but you pretty much need the term life insurance until you have that up and running. Okay. But, but yeah, you don't need to make buy too much. Since it, overall, it typically isn't a good investment, but it's just there for emergency. You don't want enough insurance that if, unfortunately one of you dies, the other one doesn't have to work the rest of your life. That, that, that's, that's too much. You're not going to need that much. You're just, gonna, you're just gonna pay all your money now. Don't buy enough to make the cops suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good rule of thumb. And if we set aside ten percent of our income towards savings, how would you recommend distributing that ten percent to maximize our return? You know, a diversified portfolio of bonds or savings accounts or CDs or maybe even money market, like mutual funds. I personally would just say mutual funds since it's pre-diversified. You don't have to worry about any of it. And they're typically lower fees than a lot of than most brokers. You could also you could also talk to a full service or discount stockbroker and talk about oh that's me. Oh, right? No, we're not. What about gold? Gold. Gold right now is really high. It's the highest it's been in a long time. It's probably not going to keep going up much. I mean, if you have any gold now, sell it. But I wouldn't recommend investing in it. Yeah, I mean, you're, if you're investing in gold, you're just chasing after something that's already gone up. That's how most people lose money in any market. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Good. Okay. Nice job, yes. Thank you.